Well, hello, pre-calculus students. The first notes of the year give a summary of sections 1, 1 through 1, 3. So the first example is written there. Evaluate the function at each value and sketch a graph. I suggest that you pause the recording, write this down. I'm going to get going on, on evaluating this function and sketching this graph. OK, now one thing just before we get started. Although it says evaluate and sketch the graph, it does not mean we have to do things in that order. We can start with the sketch and then evaluate the function if we choose. So let's just talk about this function. Now this is what's called a piecewise function, f of x equals, and there's three pieces. So we use this first piece for all x values less than zero. So let's think of this function. This is like y equals x plus two but it's not the entire line, it's only the part of this line for any x values less than zero. Then this second one, f of x equals four when x is between zero and two. So that's like saying, okay, this is the function y equals four anytime our x value is between zero and two. And then the third part says f of x equals x squared. That's like the function y equals x squared anytime your x value is greater than or equal to two. So really we're looking at three different parts of functions. So we're not going to have the entire graphs of any of these. It's going to be parts of these graphs given these restrictions. Okay, so let's evaluate the function first. So this first one says find f of negative two. What that means is plug negative two in for x into this function. Well, where should you plug it in? Maybe we plug it in this first part or this last part. Well, remember, these restrictions to the domain tell us when to use each part of the function depending on the x value. So since x here is negative 2, we're going to use this first one right here. So we can use the function y equals x plus 2 or f of x equals x plus 2. I'll jot that down. So let's plug x in to this function. So negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and there's what f of negative 2 is equal to. So we're given the function. We plug the number into the appropriate function up here in our piecewise function. Okay, next one. f of negative, or excuse me, f of 1. This means we're going to plug 1 in place of x. But which one of these are we going to plug it in? So the first one we have there. We use when x is less than 0. The last one we use when x is greater than or equal to 2. For f of 1, we're going to plug it into the second one. So here's your function, y equals 4. And we're going to plug 1 into that function. Hey, wait a minute. We're plugging 1 in place of x. There is no x. So guess what? The value of that function is going to be 4. Okay, last one, f of 2. So now which piece of our piecewise function are we going to plug that into? The first piece is only for x values less than 0, so we're not going to use that. The second piece is for x values between 0 and 2. Now notice it says x is less than 2, not equal to 2. Down here it says x is greater than or equal to 2. So that's the piece of the piecewise function that we're going to use. So we could rewrite this function, y equals x squared, and then we can plug this value in place of x. So if I put 2 in there, 2 squared, we get a value of 4. Okay, so that's how we evaluate the function at each value. Now, let's talk about sketching that graph. So, I'm going to use my three colors here so it matches with these functions. So, what I want to do is sketch this function right here, y equals x plus 2. We know this is the graph of a line with y-intercept 2 and slope 1. So, I'm going to go up to y-intercept 2 on my graph, and my slope is up 1 and right 1. So, here's what that function looks like on a graph and I can connect those dots and extend the line. Now, what I've just done is really incorrect here because really we're only going to use this function here for these values of x when x is less than 0. So I'm going to need to grab my eraser here. Notice these x values here are greater than 0. I really should not have included these at all. It's only for these values of x less than 0. And when x is 0 itself, it doesn't include this value. So when x is 0, we get a y value of 2. I'm going to circle that to show it's this half line, it's this array up 2, but not including this point. 
Okay, now I'm going to switch to green. So now I'm saying, hey, my function is y equals 4. Well, y equals 4, we know, is a horizontal line. It's a horizontal line that goes through the y-axis at 4. So if I count up 1, 2, 3, 4, horizontal line would look something like this. Well, once again, I've sketched too much of this graph because it really is just this function for x values between 0 and 2. Okay, so I'm going to erase all these x values less than 0, all these x values greater than 2, and it really is just this part right here. Now, just like before, I want to put um, an open or a closed circle. Now, since x can be equal to 0, I'm going to put a closed circle. Since x is not equal to 2, I'm going to put an open circle here. So it's saying it's this function between these two values. Okay, third piece of the piecewise function, y equals x squared for all x values greater than or equal to 2. Well, y equals x squared is the graph of a parabola. That parabola has a vertex at 0, 0. So, for example, if x equals 0, 0 squared is 0. It would be right here. If x equals 1, 1 squared is 1. If x equals 2, 2 squared is 4. If x equals 3, 3 squared is 9, etc., etc. And we could go in the negative direction as well. But I already know that I'm only going to have this graph for x values greater than or equal to 2. So even this first point, I don't even need. Second point, don't need. Third point, it's going to keep going up from here. It's a parabola. It's just part of a parabola. If I were to get the whole thing, it would curve like this. But it's only this part here. I'm going to erase those other two points I've got down there. Now, since x can be equal to 2, I'm going to put a solid dot there, or a solid point. Now, people get confused here where we have this open and closed circle. Here where you have a break in the graph, you definitely need to show that with an open and or closed circle. But since there's no break in this graph, we don't have to have an open or a closed circle. We can simply say that, hey, it goes from this graph straight into this other piece of the graph. So there's our evaluation of the function. There's our sketch of this graph. Okay, let's move on to another example. Same kind of example. We want to evaluate the function at each value and sketch the graph. I would suggest that you write this down, pause the video, try this out, see what you can do with this. But I'm going to run through this relatively quickly. So first of all, evaluating the function f of negative 2. I'm going to use that first part, negative 2 squared. The answer is 4 f of negative 1, I'm going to use the second piece, put negative 1 in here, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1. f of 2, we're going to use that third part piece. Now, careful, don't always assume we're just going to use the first, second, and third piece. It's just set up that way to give us a little practice with this. Since 2 is greater than 1, we use that third one. That's just the function y equals 3, so y always equals 3. Okay, so now I want to graph y equals x squared. It's part of a parabola for x values less than negative 1. So I'm going to go to negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. There's a point that's on our, not quite on our graph because it's not equal, so I'm going to put an open circle. Let's put negative 2 in there. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 3 squared would be 9. And this graph would go on and on forever to the left. So this part of this parabola looks like so. Okay, second piece of the function. y equals 2x plus 3. Now that's going to be the graph of a line. We're actually going to graph just a segment, a segment between these x values. So when x is negative 1 for this function here, y is equal to 1. So that's going to make this a closed point right here. When x is 0, y is going to be equal to 3. And when x is 1, y is going to be equal to 5. Now, careful, that's going to give us an open circle. And then we've got a segment connecting those three points. Okay, third piece, y equals 3. Now, we know y equals 3 is a horizontal line. So, for all x values, starting with 1, we've got a horizontal line that is 3 units above the x-axis. So since it, let's see here, it's x is greater than 1, so that's going to give me an open circle right there. And there's my horizontal line. It actually is a horizontal ray. 
three units above that axis. So there's my evaluation of the function at those values, and there's a sketch of this graph. Now this graph here, this is the graph of this entire piecewise function. Okay, so piecewise functions, we should be able to evaluate points as well as sketch a graph. Let's move on to a different kind of problem. So this third example, it says, describe the increasing or decreasing behavior of the function. And once again, you might want to pause the video, jot this down, have some graph paper handy. So what this means is where is this graph going upward? Where is this graph going downward? Is it ever constant, meaning it's going just horizontal? So what we need to do first is sketch a graph of this. Now we could pull out our graphing calculator and just to give ourselves an idea of what this graph looks like. I'm going to plot some points and to do that I'm going to make a table of values. So I'm going to make an XY table here. And I'm going to choose some negative values. So I'm going to choose 0 and some positive values. Now if we plug negative 2 in place of x, we get negative 8 minus 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. So let's see here, minus 8 plus 6, that gives us a y value of negative 2. If we plug negative 1 in here, we get negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Minus 3 times negative 1, which is plus 3, that gives us a value of 2. If we plug 0 in here, 0 cubed is 0 minus 0, that is also 0. If we plug 1 in here, we get 1 minus 3, we get negative 2. And if we plug 2 in here, we get 8 minus 6, which is 2. So I'm just going to get these points on here just to get an idea of what this graph looks like. And you'll notice kind of a, a different kind of shape to this graph. It looks like it kind of goes up and down, up and down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a couple more points here. I'm going to put negative 3 and 3 in place of x. If we put negative 3 in here, we get negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Minus 3 times negative 3, which is plus 9, we get negative 18. And if we put 3 in here, we get 3 cubed is 27. Minus 3 times 3, which is minus 9, we get positive 18. So if we put negative 3 in here, we get a value that's way down here off our graph. Positive 3 gives us a value way up here off our graph. And if we try to connect these points with a smooth curve, it looks something like this. Oops, just missed that point. Something like this. And actually, the more of these functions we see, we'll start to recognize that if we have a function y equals x cubed, okay, we know if we have something like y equals 2x plus 3, that's going to give us a line y equals x squared, that's going to give us a parabola. We know y equals x cubed is going to give us some kind of curve like so. So this the sketch of this graph makes sense. Okay, now really what the problem is asking is not to sketch the graph, but to describe the increasing or decreasing behavior. So we can see from left to right, this graph goes upward, then it goes downward, then it goes upward again. Now, careful. Notice I said from left to right. That's one of the keys to this problem. Sometimes people say, well, doesn't it go, can't you think this way and it goes down, then up, then down? Sure, from right to left, but we always think left to right. We always think for increasing values of x, what's happening to the function. So as x is going up, the function is also going up. The y values are going up, then down, then up. So here's how we're going to write this answer. We're going to say this is increasing for a while. Then it is decreasing. Then it is increasing. Well, now we need to be a little more specific. When is it increasing? Well, no matter where we start, it's going up, 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 up until it gets to this point. So it starts way over to the left. It starts at negative infinity, forever to the left, up until this point right here. Now this point, we're looking at we're not looking at this point itself, we're looking at this x value. So for all x values up to this x value, well this x value is at negative 1. So we can say it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 1. There's the second key point. These numbers we're writing down are all x values. 
Biggest mistake I see students make is they write y values for these. Okay, then we can see the graph decreases between these two x values. So it is decreasing from negative 1 to this next x value, which is 1. And then it increases from there on forever, so we'll say from 1 to infinity. And there's the increasing or decreasing behavior of this function. So keys to that first, think left to right. Second, this is the big key. These numbers here are x values. These are not points, they're x values. They're ranges of values. So the graph is increasing between these two x values, decreasing between these two x values, and increasing between these two. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. Same exact kind of problem, same directions. I'll go pretty quickly through here. Describe the increasing or decreasing behavior of this function. This function here, a little more familiar to us. This is a parabola that is shifted down five units. So it's like y equals x squared. Whoa. Like y equals x squared, but shifted down five units. So again, thinking left to right, we can see it is decreasing to start and then increasing. So let's jump right to our answer here. So it is decreasing within this interval, and then it is increasing within this interval. Now these numbers we put in here are going to be the x values. So it's decreasing forever here to the left until this x value right here, until our x's reach this point. Careful, that has nothing to do with that five units down that it is. It is decreasing forever from negative infinity to zero. After that, it is increasing forever, starting when x is 0 and going on forever to infinity. So there will be your solution to this example. Okay, I believe this is our last example of these notes graph. And I'm just going to rewrite this function. This says f of x equals, and then it's got these square brackets. And sometimes you'll see a regular bracket. Sometimes you'll see, this is why I'm rewriting this. Sometimes you'll see a double bracket. What this is, it's called the greatest integer function. It's a new function for us. You probably haven't seen this before. And let me give you an idea of what this is. With any new function, we can always start with what we learned way back in middle school. Let's make a table of values. Let's plug some x's in and see what y is equal to. So if we plug a value like x in there, the greatest integer function tells us that, hey, this is the greatest integer that is, I guess, included as our x value. Okay, so when x is 1, y is also going to be equal to 1. So likewise, when x is 2, and I'm going to write it down here, you'll see y in just a bit, y is going to be equal to 2. You might say, well, nothing really is happening here, but what if we get some um, non-integer values? Like what if x is 1.1 or 1 and 1 tenth? What the greatest integer function is, it's saying let's round to the next lowest integer, or let's just include the integer part of this number. So y would be equal to 1. If x is 1 and 5 tenths, y equals 1. If x is 1 and 9 tenths, y equals 1. If x is 1 and 99 one hundredths, y equals 1. So it's not saying round to the nearest integer. It's saying, tell me how much, what's the, kind of like think money. If you have a dollar and 10 cents, you have one dollar. How many dollars do you have? Dollar 50, you have one dollar. Dollar 99, you have one dollar, okay? So how do we graph these points? Well, let's, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can make this uh, graph just a little bit bigger for us. There we go. So let me plot these points here. So first one comma one, that's an easy one. 1.1 .1, 1 comma one means go over one and one tenth and up still that one. 1.5 comma 1, 1.99 comma 1. So basically what's happening is it's all these values on this little step. Until you get an x value of 2, then it jumps up here. Now, we don't have any points for this, but you can see 2.1, 2.5, 2.9 is going to work the same way. It's going to jump up here to 3. 3.1, 3.5, 3.9, etc., etc. 
And this is what's called a step function, meaning you're going to see these steps appear as we plot more and more points. Now let's go back to here. So remember, if x is 1.99, y is still equal to 1. And it goes up to, but it does not include this value 2. So I'm going to put an open circle there. And likewise, for every step along the way, we're going to complete that step. So we've got an entire segment and then an open circle because it does not include that next point. So on the left part of every step, we've got a closed circle. On the right part, an open circle. And this step function, it continues on and on. And actually, we can go in the negative direction as well. And I'll get one more step here and call it a day. OK, so that is what's called the greatest integer function. And it's an example of a step function. Okay, that wraps up your first set of notes for the year. We've got some homework that we got down with our groups, so make sure you take care of this. Then we'll move on to the second set of notes.